it is always a twofold attack. It's an inside job and then an outside launch. It's always an inside and then comes from outside. If you don't acknowledge the inside job, then you will always be looking outside as to who it is that is doing this, and you forget that the enemy is using those around you. Now, that doesn't mean that they even know what, what they are doing. Let's be careful. The fact that the enemy uses somebody doesn't mean that they are willfully being used. Okay? Some are manipulated and confused and, and led of the enemy to do it even when they don't understand what they are doing. And so there is that place. So whether it is intentional or not, look out for that inside job. And then the enemy, when he breaks the bond within, then he knows that the two cannot stand. Therefore, he brings an outside attack that completely overwhelms the individuals involved. And so look for that. And he does that through accusation, distrust, being tired of each other, and then having an independent spirit. Hallelujah. Last week, we talked about the second device is an attack on our children. There's a difference between fruitfulness and multiplication. The difference between fruitfulness and multiplication is what? Is the seed. Someone say the seed. And the enemy is always after the seed. If he can destroy the seed, he can completely take you out. Amen. And so watch out, watch out for your children. If you are a child, watch out for how the enemy tries to break the bonds and begins to attack your life. The enemy always wants to pass on generational weight and confusion and burdens. And so we have to be aware of that. He will use an attack against our children to try to shut us down. Today we are going to go into the third one. The third device the enemy uses against us is his agenda to contaminate your integrity. When the enemy is attacking you, he will, he will attack your integrity. Don't say integrity. Uh, integrity. I said integrity. Uh -huh, say the T. T for it. <laughs> integrity. I said integrity on purpose. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Hallelujah. I pray this word changes all of us. Amen. God wants to establish us in the place where the enemy cannot fight us. The enemy cannot stand against us. And the way we do that is to be established in our integrity. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1. Bible says that dead flies putrefy the perfumous ointment. They make it smell. Make it smell bad. And cause it to give off a foul order. So does a little folly to one respected for wisdom and honor. Dead flies putrefy the perfumous ointment and cause it to give off a foul order. So does a little folly to one respected for wisdom and honor. What Bible is saying is that there can, there can be a sweet smelling perfume, but when flies die, right? The women are the they, they, they go for the oil and they die, all of a sudden they are, they are, they are rotting or their decomposition or whatever begins to give the perfume a bad smell. Folly is foolishness. Foolishness, the Bible says that the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And so folly is when you live your life, when you act without acknowledging God. Hallelujah. And if we can take it a step further, folly and foolishness and not acknowledging God is, an, is actually an attempt or actually an, uh, actually a rebellion against God. Come on, say rebellion. Because every choice of sin is a choice. Every time we sin, it's a choice. Rarely would you be, you know, oh my God, what happened? 99.9% .9 of the time, it's a choice. Let he that is tempted, do not say that God is tempting me, but he himself is led away by his own lust. All right? And so it's, it's all you. Hallelujah. It's all, it's, it's all on us. The, I mean, the, the enemy sets traps. He gives you an invitation. That's what he does. He says, there's a party over there. <laughs> I know you've heard about the party. I know you've thought about the party because I've told you this before. 
but officially from the department of the demonic, I invite you to this party. Would you please join us? And it is up to you to say, uh, this is the wrong address. I don't live in this kingdom anymore. Uh, re return to sender. We can say, hmm, this sounds interesting. It sounds like a credit card for 24% interest. You know, I think I want to sign for this. You open it up, and then you read it. And then your lust builds more. Your desires build more. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes that one friend or comes that person you haven't spoken to in a long time. Bloop, a text comes. You're like, uh-oh. All of a sudden, the desire builds more. To the point where now when, the, when you get to the party, when you get to the invitation, you have already convinced yourself that this is where I'm supposed to be. If the enemy can get you to the party, I mean, you're trapped. I mean, they take you to Shanda and go crazy. The Bible says flee, right? Flee. So you have to flee. Flee is screaming, running, flying, somersaulting through a small hole all at the same time. Get me out of here! You got to do something dramatic to get out. Otherwise, if it's like, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's how it happens. <laughs> at that point, it's over. So whatever the invitation is, Whatever it is, the enemy wants us to live a life of foolishness, which is not acknowledging God. And not acknowledging God now makes our anointing, our aroma now smell bad. Now your testimony smells bad. Now your word smells bad. Now your attitude smells bad. Not because you don't love God, but because of a fly. Because of something that came and now contaminated the oil. And so the enemy's attack against us is now to discredit us. And the way to do that is to invite us to things and to cause us to not acknowledge God. So what is it in your life that the enemy has been inviting you to over and over again? Or maybe it was just something that started or something that was passed down from generations. Whatever it is, what is it that the enemy is using to contaminate your anointing? And if I can boldly say this, this is one thing that he has always used. The strategy of the enemy about contamination is, is clear. If you look at people that are, that, 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 um, what's the name? People that are, that are demon-possessed, their surroundings reflected. The, the, the man possessed with lesion, where did he live? They are surrounded. I, I'm not going to uh, be all specific like that, but, but there, there, there are some other religions, you know, back home, Nima, you know. They, 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 because of the demonic in the religion, their surrounding is, 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 is filled. Demons don't like clean things. In, in Israel, the pig was what? Unclean. Where did the demons ask to go? <laughs> so they don't, they don't like clean. And so the enemy's plan has always been to contaminate. Now, uh, this, 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 this message is, yes, definitely focused on holiness as in purity, but I'm going to take you to a, another place also. So don't, don't think of it just as, as sin, as moral sin. Um, but integrity deals with the heart. Integrity is more than just morality. Because you make decisions that must acknowledge God that are not necessarily moral decisions. Um, but the foundation here is that the attack of the enemy is to smear you. Nice white shirt. Ink. Boop. Now the whole thing looks different. Now people no longer see the bright white shirt now they see the stain. People see the perfume. They don't to see, oh, wow, what a beautiful bottle. You know, what, you know what? I've used that before. It smelled good. Now all the smell is foul smell. And the enemy's plan is to make you completely do it. And now, now uh, this, is, this is all connected in my head. So just, just, just receive what God is saying. That now that the anointing, the grace, whatever upon your life is now contaminated, now the foul order now begins to expel people from around you. And so it's like, why, why, how come, how come, 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 no, no, then it's like all of a sudden, ever ask yourself, why did that person walk away? How, 
What happened? Nothing happened, and that person just walked away. The enemy just dropped a foul smell. Hallelujah. Do you want me to go further? Uh, I'll go deeper. If you are, if you are, there, there are, there are, there are, there are things that happen if you don't deal with 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 uh, with sexual things in your life, especially when 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 you have been intimate with somebody before marriage, and now you get married. All of a sudden, ah, my husband doesn't want to touch me. My wife doesn't want to touch. All of a sudden, I feel there's somebody in between us. The enemy has dropped a foul bomb. Or somebody always comes to you, you know. You go for a relationship, you are dating for a while, it's going on for a while, all of a sudden the person disappears. Like completely falls off the face of the map. It's like gone. What happened? Foul smell. The enemy dropped a foul bomb. Hallelujah. Right. I'm not going to go into all, all that, but that's, that's, that is a reality of what happened. The enemy uses that and it begins to uh, destroy things in our life. So we are going to deal with the integrity of our heart. Somebody say amen. As you grow in the things of God, things may be little as compared to your previous level, but now they seem bigger because of the new level. This is what I mean by that. Uh, when, uh, when I was in the world, cussing and smoking were okay. Even, 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 with, uh, even when... I was a good person. I didn't know Christ, but cussing and smoking were okay, right? You know, God, people around me did this. It was cool. I wasn't a bad person. I was a good person, just smoking and drinking. I was, you know, a few cars worse. Nothing wrong with that, right? But now I'm saved. Now all of this, all of a sudden, the same cussing and and all of that now no longer matches. It is the same thing. But because of the purity that you are now walking in in Christ, now it stinks even more. At first, it was, it was eh, I don't like to do it. I'm careful when I do it. But if I do it, eh, it's not so bad. But now, because of the grace, you have been moved from darkness into light. And you know the kingdom. Now, that same thing you used to, that same thing, no difference. Now, it's worse. The purer it is, the more damaging the contamination. That's what makes sin difficult for you. As we, as we go higher and higher in the things of God, sin becomes more dangerous. You hear me, church? Sin becomes more dangerous because now, first, you were at this level. At this level. So when sin comes, roll over, pick it up. You go higher in Christ. The same sin, now you are at this level, the same sin has a greater impact. The same sin affects you worse. Anybody been there where you had a great time in the presence of God, walking in his power, walking in his grace, then the enemy pushes that one button that always gets you? Then all of a sudden, the anointing goes whoosh, and you're hiding in the corner. Jesus, save me. You are running away. You are hiding like Adam. Get away from me, Lord. That's the one. The plan of the enemy is to contaminate the anointing. And if I can get you to, if he if, if, if can get us to have the anointing contaminated, then you don't pray as bold. Because now you are feeling contaminated. How many of you, are, not all of us, but some of us have done this where You've changed your diet completely. Water is now what you drink. Vegetables is what you do. The day that you decide to break away from water and drink soda, or the day you decide to change from your healthy diet and try something else, your body feels, ah, oh, there's, something, there's something off. At first, that same food was okay with you. But because of the purity that you have now put in your body, now that same is now like affecting you a different way. The purer it is, the more damaging the contamination. That's why as you go higher in the anointing, as you, as you seek the face of God, you can no longer entertain certain things as it's okay. Okay? 
because you are seeking God. You are abiding His presence. You are growing the anointing. And that means that you have to put things around you to protect the anointing, to secure the anointing, because now it takes something even less than before to contaminate. A little water in jet fuel will mess up the engine. A tank, your, your car tank, probably like 16 gallons, some 14, some 18, big ones, 22. But little water in there will blow up the engine of a car, right? It will mess it up. And so you drive and then, right? It's spattered because it, it is contaminated. Put that same amount of water in a jet fuel. Now the impact is life. Instead of just stalling on ground, you are now higher in the anointing. Now you are stalling. Now other people depend on you now. And the enemy's plan, I tell you that, the enemy is always working long term. Short term is, is okay, but it's not. It's, he works long. He sows the seed and says, I'll be back in 15 years. I reminded you last week, what you are dealing with right now are things that began 15 years ago. 10 years ago, in your childhood, and he's showing up now. The devil is having you like, how did this happen? It happened a long time ago. Right? So the enemy is working long term. And so would he rather take your car breaking down on the side of the road, or you be up there with 200 people and you stolen your airplane? The enemy is about wickedness. And so as we go through this word, I want you to make a conscious quality decision to live holy for Jesus. To set yourself apart from the things of the world and be focused and to walk right with Jesus. Because the, contaminating, uh, the, the, the contamination of our integrity is meant to cripple us in the battle. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalm 51. Psalm number 51. Verse 1. When the, when the enemy puts, it, uh, puts a, de- uh, what's the name? a deposit <coughs> in your life, <coughs> he means to cash out later. And uh, this, this one, thing, one, one thing God showed me, and I said, wow, this is great. This is great. I've, I've always had it in my mind that, can I, can I have it? Oh, it was for me. I thought it was for you. I was going to use it for you. But this is water, right? I said, Josh, hold this. I'll be back. So now, Josh, now stand up. So when I gave it to him, he was at a lowly point in his life. Things were rough. He was low, right? Now Josh is doing amazing and great. But guess what? What does Josh have? Whose water is it? So I have every right to come back and say, can I have my water? When you have something, the enemy, something that belongs to the enemy, he has every right to knock on your door and say, how's my stuff going? I said, no, Josh. He, he can come and say, oh, I just came to check on my stuff. No, no, I didn't come to bother the rest of your life. I just came to check on my stuff. And then when he comes with his stuff, he comes with his people. Uh-huh. And then he doesn't just come to visit. <clears throat> he moves in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hallelujah. And then now you are fighting something that you are like, oh, oh, no, no, no. It was okay when I was sitting. Now that I'm up, the enemy has come back for it. So be careful how you take the things of the enemy. The enemy will always come back for his stuff. Be careful. Hallelujah. Psalm 51, verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of of your tender mercies, (coughs) excuse me, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned, and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak, and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. (coughs) Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, 
and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. That, that was actually a prophetic thingy. Verse 9, hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Verse 10, create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David, David is repenting after he had gone with Bathsheba and had sinned against the Lord. And he was crying out and saying, Lord God, forgive me, Lord God. Um, Restore me. It says, have mercy upon me. Let's go back to verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your love and kindness, according to your tender message, blot out my transgressions. First John 1 9 says, What? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness, right? And so God is God says, Once you confess your sin, I will forgive you. Now David was speaking in a time before Jesus. And so it was using hyssop, was an herb they used, they would drink it, and they used it to clean themselves. And so he said, cleanse me with that, and I'll be made whole. But we don't pray for that. We say, Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus that has paid the price for my sins. Forgive me, cleanse me, and make me whole. And uh, God will forgive anything. Somebody say amen. Somebody smile and say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We thank God that he will forgive anything anything and he will forgive everything that is the confidence we have in christ that is the grace we have in jesus and that so far as i come repented and i confess it he will forgive me the difficulty the the pain with it is that gosh right sin cuts you josh is forgiving cuts him i'm hitting too hard <laughs> I'm trying to make an impact <laughs> like a sword, but it's too hard. Forgive. Forgive. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. At the end of it, he has scars all over. So God will forgive you, but you will carry those things. Is the wound healed? Yeah. Has he forgiven you totally? Yeah. Is he going to hold it against you? No, but the impact of it, this is it. Sin, I'm supposed to, who did Josh touch back to me later? So I'm supposed to be at this level after a certain time. But because I picked up sin, has God forgiven you? Yes. Have you lost time? That's why we don't mess with sin. We don't mess with sin not because God will not forgive us. He will always forgive us. But the thing is, if, if I keep doing the things that I'm not supposed to do and my liver cannot handle it and I die before my time, it is not God's fault. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, the plans I have for you to give you a hope and a future. The plan of God is there, but if you choose to entertain sin and not get there, you cannot blame God. Now, has he forgiven you? Yes. Would you make it to heaven? Yes. Would you have fulfilled his plan for your life? No. That is why we stay away from sin. It offends him. God doesn't like it. It puts, it puts a barrier between us and him. But after a while of confessing and confessing, this is, this is what happens, church. You become borderline seared conscience. I mean, uh, you have a borderline seared conscience. Callous. Those of you who play guitar. Your fingers almost insensitive anymore because it's callous. Callous. Now you, you can't hear from God and you can't sense his presence. Why is God far away from me? The Bible says that our God is not far from us, but the hand of the Lord is not far to save us, but it's our sins that have separated us from him. And so now you are saved and you are going to heaven, but you're a dead man walking. Having a form of godliness, but denying the 
power thereof because sin has come to disgrace, to despower you. And so now you are living and you are doing everything that's supposed to be doing, and, but then it has no vibrancy, it has no power, it has no future because we are carrying sin. Hallelujah. And so it's, it's, um, it, is, it is time we, we, as Bible says, modify the flesh, kill the flesh, because if you don't kill it, it will kill you. It may not keep you from going to heaven, but it will kill your divine destiny. It will kill the plan of God for your life. You will not be fruitful in this life because the enemy has now contaminated the seed. Hi, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so let us flee from sin. And David is saying, Lord, wash me, cleanse me. And so we know that God will forgive everything, but we have to be careful of unrepented sin. Hallelujah. Unrepentant sin is, no one knows about it. It's just my, it's okay. I'm just going to pretend I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just, eventually, when there's a thorn in your side, when there's, when, there's, when there's a thorn in your finger, eventually it's going to swell up. Eventually it's going to gather something. Eventually it's going to come out. Hallelujah. And will God forgive? Listen, a small wound can become a big gash. Will God still heal? Yes. Who has to sit at home? With your leg up. Hallelujah. So please, please receive it in your spirit um, that God is willing and able to forgive every. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us. Nothing is unforgivable. The only thing that's unforgivable is that which is not repented of. But if you repent, you forgive. How many times? He tells us 70 times 7, right? He is infinity times infinity. That is the love of God. That's the grace of God. And the Bible tells us in the book of, of Titus um, that, the, that the, the grace of God compels us to live holy. No longer do I keep sinning because I know he'll forgive me, but because I know he forgives me and he loves me, and that grace compels me to say no to sin. The grace of God is not an excuse to keep sinning. The grace of God is to forgive and to strengthen you. Um, but the grace of God should compel you to say, I love you so much, Jesus. I love Lord. I'm sorry I offended you. I repent. I turn my back to what I was doing. Now I'm going in a whole new direction. Some of us want to get out of sin very cute. You are in the jail of sin. Jesus forgives you. And so now you're out, right? You're out of jail. You're like, oh, thank you, Lord, for your freedom. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you for your freedom. How amazing you are, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm going to find my way back into my sin. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And now you're back in jail again. Oh, Lord, God, forgive me, Jesus. Oh, my God, God, really happy to get all. Oh, Lord, you know my heart. <laughs> he gets you out, but you are still hanging around when you change your mind. You run, you separate yourself, you, you don't entertain it. Because the moment you see it, the invitation, don't you miss this? Come on, come on. Just, 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 just one, just one more time. Just, come on, there's nobody here. Just, you're not hurting anybody. Hallelujah. The, the devil also told you that? Just one more time. You're not hurting anybody. No one's going to know. It's okay, God will forgive. Yeah, so it's okay, yeah. Man, that devil is consistent, is he? <laughs> he tells us all the same thing. <laughs> so be careful, man. Run from sin. Run, run, run from sin. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, let's focus on this. Verse number six. Verse six and verse ten. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts you make me to know wisdom. You remember in Ecclesiastes 10, <laughs> verse 1, our first scripture, it says that the flies make the perfume contaminated, right? So does what? A little folly to one respected for what? Wisdom and honor. Can we put uh, 
Ecclesiastes 10 verse 1 up, please. 10 verse 1. Uh huh. The second part. So does a little folly to one respected for what? Wisdom and honor. In Psalm 51, it says that, verse 6 says, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts you make me to know what? Wisdom. Wisdom is just not knowing. It's, wisdom is beyond knowledge. You can have a lot of knowledge and not have wisdom. Hallelujah. You, you, I don't know if you know this. Gray hair is not a sign of wisdom. Hallelujah. Some people have gray hair and are still foolish. Hallelujah. No, keep, keep, don't, don't think too far. Amen. Just, just acknowledge the truth that gray hair doesn't mean wisdom. But the Bible says that he desires truth in the inward parts, in the hidden parts, the, 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 the Lord searches. And so this is where Hebrews 11 verse 3 says, The integrity of the upright shall guide them. Someone say the integrity of the upright shall guide them. And so now it, is, it, it goes beyond just an, an, an outside folly. It goes beyond just disobedience to God. It goes beyond what David is saying, Oh, Lord God, no, forgive me, forgive me. Now David is going even further and say, Lord God, the devil is trying to do an inside job in my heart. Because the word integrity is where we get the word integer. Integer is what is a whole number. And so the plan of the enemy to contaminate your integrity is not just to smear you with bad report. No, and he does this and she does that and he said this. No, that's, that, that's, that is part of it. But the greater damage of the enemy is to break your wholeness in half. It is to separate your heart. That's what we call a broken heart, right? A broken heart cannot hold anything. And so because it is broken in you, all of a sudden, the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And so if the enemy has come in and done a number on the integrity of your heart and broken it by sin, all of a sudden what comes out is no longer whole. The wholeness of your heart will mean wholeness of your speech. But if I can contaminate your heart and break it apart and not make it whole, then what you say is no longer coming from the wholeness of your heart because your heart is no whole. And so if your heart is broken, you speak broken English. When you are in pain, you speak pain. When, 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 when you are bound, you speak bound. Now all of a sudden, when there is sin in your heart and that has Broken the integrity of your heart. Now when you see something uh, that looks like your sin, that sounds like your sin, you say, oh, it's okay. You know why you say okay? So it will normalize you. If I say that's wrong, then it's a problem with me. So therefore, I can't say that's wrong. That's how we believers and the church has gone to a place where we are now accepting evil in the world because our heart is not whole. And if my heart is not whole, how dare I point a finger? You know, you don't know what he's going through. You don't know what's happening. Well, sin is sin. I don't mind calling sin sin and then loving the person to wholeness. But when there's a contradiction in your heart, when your heart is not whole before God, when your heart is not pure before God, and, and, and I'm going to pull back and say, no one needs to tell you when your heart is like that because you know. And so I'm not going to go into a detail of stop this, stop that. You know what it is. Um, but when the heart is not whole and the heart is contaminated, all of a sudden the things that spew out of your life are incomplete. Now you begin to uh, find others that are able to compromise. Right? You find those that have compromised the anointing, the grace, the favor. Those you find people that will agree with you that says that this is not too bad. Guess what? Everybody does it. So all of a sudden, you are now becoming callous. You are now becoming hard and seared because now what made you jump and say, Oh Jesus, no Lord, forgive me. I can't believe this happened. Now it's like Ah, man, that was bad, man. That was terrible. It's comfortable. You no longer hate sin. The passion and the anger towards sin and the anger toward the things that do not please God. You've lost that fervency because inside of this, the enemy has done a good inside job of contaminating your integrity. 
Bible says the integrity of the upright shall guide them. Proverbs 11, 3. And so because your integrity will guide you, if your integrity is broken, where are you going? Where are you going? The enemy is attacking the wholeness of our heart. And I want to speak to your heart right now where in a place where you, you, you realize that, mm, you realize that you are not who they say you are. In that bad way, right, where you are like, people think I am all of that, but they don't know. They don't know. They don't know what I'm dealing with. They don't know. They know I pray. I seek the face of God. They know I'm nice. I help people, but they don't know. They don't. If you are there today, let's make it whole. Today, let's get the wholeness of our heart back. Because, listen, it is too hard to be two people. I can't even deal with myself. <laughs> now, now I'm trying to find out. I mean, who, wait, wait. Who am I to you? Who am I to you? Who am I to you? Now I'm playing different. different it's, it's, it's way too much. And once you lie once, you got to find a, like, a lie to defend a lie. And now you're like, wait, wait, wait. Which lie did I tell you? <laughs> I, was, I was just kidding, JK. No, you are not just kidding. Your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Hallelujah. The enemy wants to destroy our lives by contaminating our integrity, and we cannot let that happen. Somebody say amen. Look at verse number 10. He says that create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast, renew a steady, renew a, a constant, re renew a reliable, renew a consistent spirit within me. Somebody say amen. The, the, Let's go to Job 2, 9. Job chapter 2, verse 9. The, the Hebrew word for integrity is tom. It means completeness. It means full. It means perfect. It means upright. The enemy wants to do the opposite of all of that. Look at Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2, verse number 9. Then his wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? This is Job's wife telling him to, to give up on God and to give up on Jesus and completely ignore everything. Just curse him and die. Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. Rebel against God and die. Disobey God and you know, just, just forget that God. God doesn't understand what you're going through. That's a lie. The Bible says that we do not have a high priest that does not understand our infirmities because he himself was tempted in all ways yet without sin. And so he knows our, our pain. He knows what we are going through. He knows, he knows everything that you are feeling right now. He's felt it before. He carried the weight on the cross, the rejection, the abandonment, and the, the, the torment, the, the anger, all of it he carried. And so when he's, when he's praying for you, because the Bible says he seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. So when he's praying for you, he's not saying, oh, Lord God, I have no clue what he's saying. But you know, he's saying it's the Lord, do it for him. He says, Lord, I know how that feels. And sometimes you don't know what to pray. But the Holy Spirit will give you utterance. You will speak some crazy tongues. You don't understand what you are saying. And, but Jesus says, oh, I know that sound. I know that pain. And then you, you get exactly what you need. Hallelujah. The wife of Job was challenging him and saying, let go of your integrity. Let go of your completeness. What are you, look, what has God done for you lately? Does God even care for you? Why are we even in church? Why do we even love Jesus? Why are we even serving God? Just forget the whole thing. Let's drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. There's no point to life. Everybody fails me anyway. Everybody leaves me anyway. Everybody hurts me anyway. Let's just forget it. Let go of your integrity. Drink anyway. Curse anyway. Behave anyway. And just disobey God. Let God know that he cannot do this to you. Shake your fist at God. Why do you want to fight the only one who, who can save you? The only one who has already done the work to save you. It's already been arranged. If you only believe, you can have it. But the plan of the enemy is saying, lose your integrity. Come on, lose it. 
Be sick and tired of them and lose your integrity. Get tired of life. All this holiness stuff. Holiness, holiness, holiness. Why can't I just, you know what, party a little bit? I see them, they're having all the fun out there. I'm here talking about Sunday, every single day. Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, Friday. I want some fun in my life. I want to cut loose. There's a way. That's my right unto a man. But the end thereof is death. Remember, when you find yourself in those environments, the enemy is not looking for you to fall right then. It, the devil knows that if he puts something in front of me right now, I'll be like, man, forget you. But long term, leave that thing around for a while. Every day you sweep around it and you walk around it. and you, Eventually, <laughs> eventually, you're going to have that wine, right? Eventually, you are going to touch it. But guess what? Now, it, it, it ages. Well, fine, fine wine ages. <laughs> it gets better with age, right? So now, what was a little bit is now concentrated, really potent. Take you out. The plan of the enemy contaminates your integrity. I want you to begin to look at your heart right now. Even begin to search and see and say, no, am I, am I whole in my heart? Am I complete? Am I full? Am I, am I, am, or is, is there, or is there places in my heart where uh, I have been contaminated? And I, I, want, I want to say this again. This is something you can tell. It's not something that somebody is pointing a finger and say, look at your heart. No, you. When you go before God to pray, you're squirming. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Lord God, I let everything go, but Lord, don't touch this one. No, 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 Jesus, no, no, Jesus, don't come here. You know in your heart what things you are keeping from God, how you are being disobedient. You want to let loose in worship, but you are worshiping that you remember, ah, Jesus, no, I'm, I'm not ready for that. All of a sudden, your hands go down, your head goes down, and you sit, you're like, hmm, maybe not today. I'll be back next Sunday. You know what you've been fighting with. The enemy, what's happening in your heart, is, is, a, is a wrestle for your integrity. It's a wrestle for the wholeness of your heart. That's not Bible says that. Guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. So if the enemy can break the integrity of my heart, then the issues of my life will always be broken. Then the enemy would have won the battle because every issue that comes out of a broken heart is broken. The enemy wants to weaken you. He wants to make you powerless in the natural and in the spirit. And so he's just sending things after you. You need to guard your heart. And don't listen to Job's wife. Just curse God and die. Are you still holding on to your... They, 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 they always said this to me. I was, I was part of the, of the soccer team. And he said, Moses, Moses. Moses, I hear you're a virgin. I'm like, yes, I am. Moses, are you sure? Yes, I am. Are you going to really, really, re are you really going to hold on to your integrity before you get married? No, this was, I mean, soccer players, they don't care. They just go around. They are, they are famous in their school, so they are famous for other things except for soccer. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I was part of them, and I was the team manager, and I was working with them. And, and that was a hard question. Moses, come on, man. Are you going to hold on to your integrity? Just forget God. Just do whatever makes you happy. Just do whatever it takes. And you say, no. No. Because what it means to me is more whole, is more important than the short pleasure you offer me. It's over. It's done. And the same enemy that gave you the invitation to the party and invited you to sin jail is the same one that will stand and say, Dear God, you know what he did last summer. <laughs> the same one who sent the invitation and said, Welcome, is the same one that becomes a prosecutor. And every time you try to shake it off, he reminds you, remember what you did? Remember what you did? Remember what you did? But today, be free of that because in Christ, we are a new creation. All things are passed away and all things are become new. One thing you have to be quick to do is to be quick to repent. 
And the other part is be quick to receive forgiveness. Some of us say, you know what? I confessed it, but I got to carry the cross. I got to pay the price. No, you cannot. The punishment of sin is death. So unless you are willing to die, accept life. Hallelujah. And so once you confess it, he has forgiven you. It is done. <gasps> I am free in Jesus. Now guard your heart. Keep yourself away from that sin jail. But don't walk around being sanctimonious and pious and, you know, I have to wear all black this week. I cannot pray in the spirit. You don't know what's happening. I am carrying my cross. Don't carry no cross because you cannot carry it. Okay? The same way your confession is immediate, your forgiveness is immediate. Fall in love with, with, with feeling free that you no longer want to go back. Enjoy the grace and the freedom of holiness because a, a lot of thou shalt not, thou shalt not are good for us. They are very good for us. Somebody say amen. Since, you know, um, it's, 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 it may seem like God is being harsh on you, but God has kept you. God has kept you. Somebody say amen. And encourage all, all, the, all the young people. Keep, keep your innocence. Amen. Keep your purity. Keep it. Because today, the only woman I know is my wife. That's it. Listen, the enemy tells you, party, 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 party. And the day you get married, now you are with your husband or wife. Now you're thinking of uh, Shaquina and, and, and Janae and Renee. And you are thinking of all the, listen, the enemy is sowing a seed. Oh, am I being too real? That is the battle you are fighting. You know what? You don't act like he does. You don't act like he does. You don't treat me like he does. Because you have been all over. And now... Because you are all over, your heart is not whole. So even when the right person comes, now you start beating them up. Not because of them, but because your heart is not whole. Because your heart is all over the place. Hallelujah. One, one prayer I prayed. My ex and I broke up. And... When I started talking to Delali, I realized that my heart was still not there. My heart was still like, oh, girls, oh, I'm going to get my master's, get my house, <laughs> get my car, pay all my debt off, be established before I even say hello to a woman. <laughs> they are evil. <laughs> Listen, there's evil. Then there's evil. <laughs> evil is worse than evil. I was, I was like, no. And you guys know how God got me, right? She was on stage in worship and about, about to come on stage and they were lined up. And then I was just about to stand away. Like, oh, Jesus, don't do this to me. I want to hold on to my bitterness. I want to hold on to my anger. I don't want to like it. Holy Ghost. I kept to it. <laughs> It was literally that. I remember turning around and saying, Lord, I came to worship. Lord, I came to worship. I didn't come for this. <laughs> Hallelujah. But <laughs> he got me. Amen. And so when I went back to school, I realized that I was, you know, the whole uh, not trusting and being suspicious. And is this going to work? How long is it going to last? Also, would it go to the eight month? Mark, and then you're also going to walk away. You know, the, the things that come to your mind, right? I do pray and say, Lord God, I remember very well. Our church was having 24-hour prayer in Fredericksburg. Went to church, laid down. I remember I went up the stairs, laid down right there. Said, Lord, my heart is broken. I don't want to give her a broken heart. Lord, heal me. It takes the level of honesty. If you, if, if, if you are... Pretending nothing is wrong, I'm fine. Nothing, you will never be whole. Admit and say, man, um, I want, I want to punch them, but I want to be. How could they? How could this happen? I'm angry. I'm blood. God is big. He can handle your mess. He can handle your anger. He can handle your frustration. But 
talk to him and say, Lord God, I'm not living here until you take this from me because right now I feel like I have every right to hold on to this. What they did to me, what they said to me. But Lord God, if I'm ever going to love like you, then my heart cannot be leaking. And so Lord God, put my heart back together again. If you are going to walk in, the, in, in your calling, in your divine assignment, Lord, put my heart back together again. If you are going to pray for somebody who, who, is, who is going through an issue that you have gone through and you want to speak the life of God to them, Lord, put my heart back together. If you are going to lead anybody, serve anybody, Lord, put my... If you are going to love the way God wants us to love, Lord, put my heart back together again. Josh and I are a team. We are working together. If, if you are going to walk together and serve each other, Lord, put my heart back together again. Because the moment my heart is not together, I don't trust any form of wholeness. So let me go, Josh. I don't trust you either because I don't trust myself. I don't I don't trust you either because I don't know myself. And so therefore, your personal battle becomes not translated to everybody else. Hallelujah. And then what you are going through is now, hmm, I see you doing that. I see you. And then was like, what are you talking about? Your own insecurities are coming out. But God, make us whole again. Daddy, make me whole again. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Amen. Right, let me go down this, this, this quickly for you. It's uh, Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart for other people, the issues of life. Proverbs 4.23. How do you guard your heart? Number one, set your heart on the word of God. Set the word of God as the standard. Set the word of God as the standard. If my heart is to be kept from that invitation... And that alarm and that, and that thing the enemy invites me and pulls me back, I must make the word of God the standard. If the invitation that comes to my house, if the letter to invite me, if the phone call to invite me does not sound like God and look like God's signature in his word, I am not opening that package. You got to make the word of God the standard. Otherwise, any invitation that comes and looks nice, you will take. Um, but when, you, when, when the standard is the word of God, uh, that doesn't sound like Jesus. It's a robocall. Let it go. But when it's the word of God, it's clear. You, you know it. It's the standard. Say, so, uh-uh. This is God's word. I receive it. God says no. Number one is set the word of God as your standard. Number two, secure your eye gate, your ear gate, and your mouth gate. That's how things come into your life. Your ears, your ears, your eyes, and your mouth. As you speak it, it's even worse. Because as you speak it, your ears hear it twice. Right? And so the, the hearing... If Nana says something, the hearing is one thing. If I repeat it, I say it again and I hear it again. And so protect your eye gate. David said that I will not set anything ungodly before my eyes. And so watch it. If it is not of God, run away. Somebody say amen. If it's not of God, don't, 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 don't try to entertain it. Just run away. If what you are hearing is not of God, shut it up and run away. Hallelujah. You got to protect your heart. Remember last time I told you, you can't let your kids just go anywhere, right? Because you are protecting the seed. You are protecting their heart. And so if the enemy comes at you the same way with things that are not of God, don't let him. In public, shut him down. You guys know of Jesse? Jesse Duplantis, right? He sat on the plane, and then this, this lady comes and sits beside her. Says, oh, man, you're a fine man. He's like, well, nice to meet you too. And then she says, oh, we can make some beautiful music together. Talking about intimacy. In the plane, he starts screaming, Horror of Babylon! Horror of Babylon! Horror of Babylon! Horror of Babylon! Lady gets up! <laughs> and this was his point. Embarrass sin before it embarrasses you. We can make some beautiful music together. Well, you, are, you, know, you know I'm married. Well, you are in trouble. No one cares. I mean, no one's going to see uh, my wife, my wife would know. Man, you are a very handsome man. Oh, oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You are staying here. We can make beautiful music together. Horror of Babylon, horror of Babylon. You run. Christians, we are too cute with sin. I don't want to, I, I will hurt your feelings. 
before you, 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 you break my heart where I can no longer go before my God because I am being disobedient. Number three, eat the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so the power to overcome sin is not to say, no, no, no. It is to get in the word of God so that when the word is in your heart, there's a new standard and the enemy's invitation cannot go there. So eat the word of God consistently. Number four, chase after the spirit of God. Galatians 5.16, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the last of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. Just stay in the spirit. Abide in the word of God. Stay in the spirit. And the last point is number five, get accountability. Because sometimes it is very, very hard to walk fully away from this. Because the person is the person you work with. The thing is right in your house. It is close in your family. It is around you all the time. You work in that environment. So it's kind of hard to walk away from it. You know, it's, it, I mean, it's very hard to forgive someone who keeps intentionally hurting you. But then they, they happen to be your uncle. Or they happen to be somebody in your family. So every single time you see them, I forgive you, they do it again. I forgive you, they do it again. So I'm saying, so there are, there, there are, the, the, there are some scenarios that are not just cut off and run away. You may still have to deal with them, but the way you deal with it is to walk in the spirit. Don't say, no, I'm not going to do you again. No, I'm not going back again because if you keep focusing your eyes on where you don't want to go, eventually you will end up where you don't want to go because that's all you see. The only vision you have is, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. All of a sudden, do you know that when you are driving, right? Your eyes control your hands. I want to go left. When you are driving and you look like a traffic, you look left, your car will lean. Your eyes direct your life. So if you're looking at, I would not, I would not, I would not. When there's pressure, <laughs> okay, okay, it's okay, it's okay. You're going to run back to it. You turn your back. Repent. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the So when the enemy is inviting you, you don't even, don't even see it. All right? The last one is get accountability. Sometimes it is hard to walk away. Nana, please stand there. Free from sin. Sometimes it's hard to walk away. Do you need someone to say, come on, come on, let's go. But I want to go back. It's okay, it's okay. Let's keep praying. Come on, let's spend time in God. Because by yourself, it's like, ah, this is hard. And then it happens again and again. But when you have accountability, somebody pulls you away. Eventually, now you are strong enough by yourself where you can just walk on and go. Somebody say amen. The enemy seeks to contaminate our integrity. And he knows this. He knows that if he gets us privately, he will get us publicly. He knows that if I get you privately, the public will be easy because you have practiced it very well. Hallelujah. And so let's protect the integrity of our heart. Somebody say amen. 